Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we are talking about how shorts need government bailout, how they're trying to create more tokens, the 7 billion market cap, and many more in this video. Now, first, we're taking a look at this. Credit Suisse has re-entered the chat. What we can see is effective with the trade date, Friday, April 12, 2024, firms are currently participating in the following service of the FICC. And what we have is Credit Suisse International. So now what we have again is Credit Suisse being in the FICC. Now, for a clearer understanding, essentially what this is, is they're essentially getting more liquidity from the government. Now, we've already seen how previously they are on the counterpart of the reverse repo so that was already one form of liquidity now clearly it does seem like that is not enough for them hence why now they're put onto the list for the FICC however something I do want to talk about here is for the FICC and this is something we've talked about in the past before is how actually the FICC does not have enough liquidity to cover all of the exposures they have on hand and we've seen this in the past before they actually don't have close to even 40 40% of all the positions that they have margin exposure to. And so even though now Credit Suisse is on the FICC, which again, the indication showing of weakening in the company, which we already know that is being bought by UBS and also the weakness in UBS, but also understanding that shorts are in need of help right now. Again, Credit Suisse being a short seller of AMC, if they were already doing so well in the short position, they wouldn't be bankrupt in the first place. Now, going aside from that, they wouldn't need reverse repo if they're doing well. They wouldn't need to be put on the FICC if they're doing well, especially when the FICC doesn't even probably have enough money to help bail them out. But it's just the fact they are on the list right now and we can see more reasons for why we know short on in a good position what we can see is this the tokenization of assets revolution that will hurt retailers with unlimited digital liquidity no surprise the financial crime lords are pushing for this amc shareholders have seen the negative impact of digital stocks already for ftx bitrex and solana it's pure crime essentially what this is right now is what the ceo of blackrock has said the next step is the tokenization of financial assets and that means every stock every bond and here he actually says we are halfway there in the etf revolution so we can see in other words we'll be rehypothecating everything from now on openly again the tokenization of shares we have talked about this before essentially what it is is obviously creating tokens and you can say they're backed one-to-one -one. and we've seen this with ftx how they said the amc tokens were backed one-to-one -one when instead they didn't actually have any shares of amc but they've offered over 500 million shares of rather 500 million tokens of amc and so you can obviously see the pure crime and manipulation that is done there. What we're seeing right now is the tokenization of assets. And you can see how this actually is what short one. And again, this is something they need as well to continuously suppress AMC because they understand if they don't find new methods, it will be game over for them. Because if you take a look at this right now, what we can see is funny how that works counterparty risk and tokenization. We can see the AMC against Solana, so the AMC price at the AMC tokens. But what this is talking about about is talking about virtue so virtue financial as we can see using this what they said is virtue will contribute its unique financial market data across equities fx futures and crypto for currencies for consumption by smart contracts using the solana blockchain and other major blockchains and again going back to this picture we're seeing amc against solana so what we know right now is that short sellers are desperately in need of tokens of amc and that's why they're trying trying to make this whole movement of tokenization a normalized thing because again understand this if they are able to fully tokenize uh, any equity in this case amc then they obviously are able to make up infinite numbers of amc and say that is backed up one-to-one -one, just like what ftx did they can easily make three billion shares of a amc tokens and say that it's backed one-to-one -one. and again that means that you are able to then locate three billion shares of amc and use that to against short AMC and so you can see how this is clearly obviously manipulation how this is clearly 
um, crime at its finest and that's what they're trying to do right now but the very fact that they're doing this is an indication that they are not doing well understand this the reason why they need to tokenize amc is because they need shares to locate to short amc now the key part in this is firstly shares to locate so we understand there is a lack of shares to be located meaning the real shares are bought up the shares we are seeing in the market are synthetic shares and shorts need your shares shorts need real shares the second thing is the fact they need it to short again why do they need to short what well, they need to bring the price down why do they need to bring the price down well that's very obvious is now understanding that they are again in a very bad position with their pnl they are losing drastic amount of money and that's why they need to short so the very fact they're trying to tokenize more amc allows us to understand they are lacking shares and they need the price to go down because they are in a very bad position with amc furthermore what we can see is this stay away from old news meme stocks like amc and gamestop and so you know when the cnb say this you know what that means you can see what he says abc for life strong buy signal for me they hate amc and gme shorted these into oblivion and now they are trapped and again we've already shown how this is the case they have shorted these into oblivion and they are trapped because of the fact they need tokenization and again the fact they need tokenization proves the fact they are trapped in this play because they need real shares and they need to short it more but furthermore understand this if they are already out of this position if they don't care about amc why would they constantly say this when you look at cnbc when you look at these news from traders from institutions for financial firms they never offer you the best stocks to buy they will never try and help you in any way they may mention a stock here or there and normally their picks is probably every for every 10 stocks that they've called out only one stock is actually profitable and so it's weird that they are right now always telling you to stay away from amc if they're not giving you stocks to make money why are they trying to tell you to run away from stocks that will lose you money even though again we understand the real reason and that's really a thought that you have to give it some um thinking and again understand the reasoning behind why they always make news about amc why they always make articles about amc always telling you to stay away and again if they have been saying that for one year and people haven't said the way then it's quite obvious people want to get to it but then why do they need to continuously say it for three to four years again the reason for that is very simple and that's because they need the real shares from you Furthermore, what we can see is this. So this is actually a very good exposure. What we can see from Crystal Ball talks about market watch scam boiler room exposed. So what we have actually was the founder of AMC bashing uh, market watch a market watch was actually convicted of making fraudulent statements to investors in 2007. And what we can see right now is again, back in March 30th, 2023. So just over a year ago, what we've seen was the fact they actually talked about the market cap of AMC to be at $7.29 billion. And again, that divided by um, the share price would give us a, a outstanding shares of 1.42 billion. Bear in mind that this was actually pre-split when we had outstanding shares of 519 million shares. Now, this before we've already taken as a fact because not only market watch we've seen it on yahoo finance we saw it on trading view we saw it on multiple different platforms but the reason why we're talking about market watch here is because market watch has a history of obviously hiding the real data so again if we saw it at 7.29 and we know that happens because of technical difficulties in the system which exposes real data and we know they have a history of hiding data of making up data then it made clear sense that again amc at least was worth 7.29 billion at that point and shown a market cap of over 1.42 billion outstanding shares and so you know this is very obvious this is just another point of proof to let us understand what we saw back then was clearly real and not a glitch and again the hedge funds and short sellers obviously messed up and wanted to cover that up furthermore what we can see is this vanguard is loaning out 100 of their shares 
Other institutions and ETFs keep buying. They know AMC is not going bankrupt. We know it, shorts know it, but there's nothing we can do until margin calls. They can't close slash cover until force. Only thing left is algo slow bleed. So obviously what we're talking about here is how institutions buying in to AMC. Now you have to understand that the difference in mind between institutions and retail investors is obviously the fact they want to make money however way possible. We want to make money here from obviously the longevity of AMC because we understand it's a good investment, but ultimately the squeeze. Um, institutions want to profit any way possible. And in this case, they are lending out to the short sellers. But what we have to understand is that, again, there will be a time when the price will jump and there will be a time because of the fact that AMC is not going to go bankrupt that they can't keep this up. And we know that from what we talked about here, firstly, understanding that over a year ago, we already saw the outstanding shares to be at 1.42 billion. We've already seen, again, how firms are constantly trying to tell you to stay away. So the fact to understand is that there will be a point in time where they can't hold this anymore and they will have to cover and that's when our time comes because all the institutions will recall the shares and you guys thank you for watching